So today we are going to be crocheting a foundation chain row. Um, this is an important piece of your crochet because this is where all your projects start. It starts with a set of chains. So this is just a chain of 16 just so you can see how it looks when you're done. And I'm going to try to go as slow as I possibly can. All right, so I am using that unknown hook from yesterday. So this is an H8 with that cool sharp edge. And then we are going to be using this fabulous green yarn because I have had it out, Red Heart. Um, and then we check this out, this diagram again, and notice, like, see how it says a swatch size, like these, this is the gauge, and it's telling you if you use the bur the hook size or needle size uh, recommended, your gauge um, should be a 10 by 10 centimeter with 22 rows and 15 I don't know what that S is, stitches across. Um, and so we're going to attempt to make a little one. So in the yarn, on yarn, just so we can start for a second, there are two ends, usually, hopefully only two. One that's on the outer skein of the yarn. I don't particularly use that because it doesn't flow very easy when it's going around the yarn and I often get it tangled. And then there's the center pull. And so the center pull is on each end of the yarn, you can see like there's like these little divots kind of thing. So you want to stick your finger in there and then pull out the yarn so you'll find it. And see how nice and smooth that comes out. Sometimes a big chunk comes out and it kind of like froze up on you. It's like yarn vomit. I think that's what this is. Ta da! There's a little piece of yarn vomit. So that's just a bunch of yarn that's tangled up. So that's what it looks like. I just like to set it aside. So we're gonna find the end again, wherever I found it. Ooh, speaking of finding things, I found my darning needle. It was in with the other needles. This is my darning needle. See, it's cool. It's stainless steel. It's pointy and a perfect little tool for sewing in ends. We'll put that away. All right, so for the start of a length of crochet or any project, you want to start with a slip knot. And a slip knot can be made in several different ways. Um, so, how I slip knot is I take my yarn and I wrap it around my finger. So it creates this loop. See, it creates this loop. And then I hold that little crisscross loop and I pull my finger off, pull it off my finger, sorry, and then put the yarn behind the loop. So see, now we've created a little loop and then the yarn is behind the loop. You can either use your crochet hook or use your finger. I use my crochet hook and slip it behind there. So now the loop is behind the hook and the yarn that was behind is on your hook. So here we're going to catch the yarn. See how that works? Catch the yarn and then pull the slip knot up. And there it is. You don't want to pull it too tight on your hook because you need a little bit for the next chain. I tug it a little bit just to give it a little bit more tightness. And see, now we have a slip knot on the hook. This is the part that gets a little fiddly for some people. So you need to have a little bit of a tail on your yarn because when you're working this, you want to hold on to this piece right here. And then that way you can make your chains 
like so. So I hold, I actually hold them both at the same time when I first make my, just so I can feel it in my hand. So now we're going to make our first chain. You're going to, it's called a yarn over. So we're yarning over the hook. Perspective is weird here, sorry about that. And then I hold on to my tail. I hook it again, see? We're catching that yarn in that hook and pulling it through this slip, no, slip stitch that's already on the hook. And there's one chain. It's glorious. So the next chain, we're going to yarn over. I grab my tail, pull it through the loop. So here's two chains. And here it is close up. Catching the yarn in the hook. I see how I rotate that so it catches on there. Pull it through the chain and there's another chain. I pull it back a little bit so I can have room for my yarn over and I keep these two separated so I can see them as the single crochet over here, well the chain stitch over here and the yarn over. So it's kind of hard if you're not holding on to this and you're trying to you're trying to yarn over and try to pull your slip stitch through your chain stitch through, it's not going to work so well. So you definitely want to hold on to this. This also gives into your tension. Don't hold it on so tight because then you'll make super tight stitches like that. I want to just give it a little bit of breathing room here. So now we're going to, I hold my working yarn back here, and my tail in my hand, my hook, and my stitch. So yarn over, pull it back through the loop, give it a little room, yarn over, pull it back through the loop, yarn over, pull it through the loop. Now as I go up my chain, I also move my fingers up the chain to hold it on to the next stitches. So I have a little bit more control of the yarn and the tension that I have when I keep it that way. Because I was like one time I was like crocheting like this and just holding my yarn out and it was very hard to keep it together. Like it's very fiddly. So I'm a control freak when it comes to my crocheting. I crochet rather slowly in comparison, comparing to my knitting. Um, it gives me, I think, like better stitch definition. Um, like with amigurumi, I don't even know if I said that right, but when you make like little stuffed animals, they're all just um, pretty much like single crochets and chains and half doubles. It's a very tight stitch. So now we have some stitches. We have our row of chains. Let's count these. I want to make like 16. One, two. You can count them. See how like they have like these little ears? I call them ears, but these are the back. This is considered the back loop and the front loop. And then there's a back back loop. So we're gonna count the back loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. wonderful chain of stitches. Some of them are a little wonky. Sometimes I'll rip it out. 
and try again, but usually I can correct the tension when I go back through for my second row. Let's look at this anatomy. You could also count the bumps in the back, the back back stitch, to see how many chains you've made. Counting crochet and rows and stitches can be kind of tedious when you have a whole bunch of them together. So I try to find like little tips for myself to keep it together because again, I don't use a row counter or stitch counter. Um, that's how I keep track. So that is the first foundation row, the chains on the new project. Okay, so there's another way to do a slip knot. Um, I don't like there. See how there's a there's this knot at the beginning. I found that it's kind of annoying when I weave ends in if that's there. So I have another way to make a slip knot for a much smoother. Um, first chain and end on your work. So how I do it here is I put the yarn over the hook and I crisscross the yarn together like that. See how that's together? And then, then I yarn over and I pull that into that stitch. So and essentially we are making a chain without a slip knot and it makes a much smoother beginning. See that? It's so much nicer than, than this knot. You'll notice a difference. Some people prefer a slip knot, some people prefer this kind of beginning so I, that's what I prefer here's our chains again and just to recap we yarn over catch the hook and yarn together see you're catching it this is where the preference of yarn hook hooks and yarn heads come into play. Some of them make it a little harder to work that crochet stitching. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And here's another chain. So next up, uh, the next video is going to be a turning row and the first row of your crochet. I think we're going to make a, like a scarf or a little square. We'll see at the end of this. Alright, so we learned how to make a slip knot slip stitch, how to yarn over, how to hold our yarn. This is the working yarn. You'll want to work on this. It's like, like your intention. And then how to make a chain crochet. I hope that was slow enough. Is this slow enough? You let me know. And there you go. Dun, dun, dun. All right, stay tuned. Turning chain and single crochet.